asked me a little over a month ago about speaking today, and almost immediately I said, no, that's not something I can do. I would be way too nervous and just don't think it's a good idea. She graciously accepted that answer, and I thought, phew, glad I'm not doing that. <laughs> then I went and sat down, and God, who has such a way of about going and getting our attention, reminded me of a question that was in one of my journals that very morning. The question was, have you missed an opportunity lately? Well, needless to say, I got back in touch with Kathy. I want to share with you something that God's been laying on my heart lately, and that is the importance of thankfulness. It would be wonderful if I could stand before you and say I've always lived a life of thankfulness, but that's not the case. It is something that I strive for, and I'm thankful that God says in Lamentations 3, 22-23, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning, raised by faithfulness. I'm so glad that when my bad attitude gets in the way, God gives me another chance. Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Secker, said, He enjoys much who is thankful for little. The definition of being thankful is having a positive attitude that produces positive results. It's the opposite of complaining. Complaining keeps us trapped in our problems, but offering up thanksgiving with praise lifts us out of our struggles. We should always try to thank God more for what we have than complain about what we don't have. If we have an attitude of gratitude and praise toward all things, it's very powerful. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. If you'd like to follow along, I'm going to recap the story in 1 Samuel chapter 1. Here we read about a woman named Hannah. Hannah was one of two wives to a man named Elkanah. Probably not pronouncing that right. She was unable to have any children. His other wife, Peninnah, had many and would taunt Hannah often to the point of tears. Hannah prayed for a child and promised that if God would give her a child, she would give that child back to him. God answered her prayer, and she had a son, and named him Samuel. Once she weaned the child, she took him to the temple, and after making an offering, she presented him to Eli. I'm sure she was heartbroken to leave her only child. But what stands out to me, if you look at verses, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, it says, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like my God. It doesn't say that Hannah made any attempts to retaliate toward Penina when she taunted her. It says she prayed. When things, people, or circumstances break our hearts, we need to do as Hannah did, and pray, and thank God for self-control, not to retaliate or attack. And if we try to be in the habit of having a thankful heart, full of praise, versus a grumbling heart consumed with our circumstances, even if our circumstances don't change immediately, the way we look at them will. Again in 1 Samuel 2, the beginning of the verse says, My heart rejoices. Let's look for a minute at joy versus happiness. The definition of joy is choosing to respond to external circumstances with inner contentment and satisfaction. Because we know that God will use these experiences to accomplish his work in and through our lives. The definition of happiness is a state of well-being, a pleasurable or satisfying experience. Being that joy is a choice, no one can take it away from you unless you let them, and that's something to be thankful for. According to www.gotquestions, depending on the translation, the Bible uses the words happy or happiness about 30 times, while joy and rejoice appears over 300 times. 
When we have gratitude or thankfulness in our hearts, it releases joy. Now turn with me, if you would, to Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. And here we read about ten lepers that called out to Jesus. Jesus told them to go show themselves to the priests, and as they did, all ten were healed. Verse 15 says, One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. The one leper came back praising him. We need to strive to be like the one. It's hard when things are going wrong, but if we can shift our focus to things that are going right, we can find a reason to praise him. It's hard not to be overwhelmed at all the difficulty around us right now. But some things to be thankful for are beautiful sunrises, good health, family and friends that check up on you, laughter, a home and food to eat, the symphony of birds singing. I could go on and on, and I'm sure you can add some to the list. But in the midst of it all, remember, God has a plan, and he is in control. Psalm 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength, and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy, and I will give thanks to him in a song. Jesus himself demonstrated examples of how to be thankful. To name just a few, in Luke 6, verse 41, when he fed the 5,000, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. When Jesus was called to the home of Mary and Martha after Lazarus became sick and died, John 11, 41 says, So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you, for you have heard me. Just one more. While Jesus was sharing the last supper with his disciples, he knew the cross was before him, and still he gave thanks. John 26, 26 through 27 says, While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. According to American theologian John Gresham Mackin, the paramount blessing is, quote, I am so thankful for the active obedience of Christ. No hope without it. What if Jesus had accepted Satan's shortcuts to power and authority? What if he had used his unlimited strength and refused to be arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane? What if he defended his innocence and stepped down off the cross? What if Jesus had not chosen to obey God and did not shed his blood for the forgiveness of humanity's sins? We would live a life with no hope. No hope for guidance, strength, wisdom, peace. No hope for eternity with him in heaven. Praise God that he was obedient. And if he, we have asked him into our hearts, we do have hope and a reason to be thankful. We can always find someone who has it harder than we do. But no matter what the circumstances, we may be experiencing, there's ultimately nobody that has it any better than we do. Yes, my friends, we have so very much to be thankful for. And just so you know, this is a very short sermon today. <laughs> <laughs> so my challenge for you this week is to start and end each day intentionally finding several things for which we can thank God. Colossians 4, 2 says, devote yourselves to prayer being watchful and thankful. We can thank God in advance for what he's going to do, as well as for how he's answering our prayers presently. And a few closing thoughts I want to share with you. The first was written by Amy Weatherly. Some people could be given an entire field of roses and only see the thorns in it. Others could be given a single weed and only see the wildflower in it. 
Perception is a key component to gratitude, and gratitude a key component to joy. And the next one was written by Max Lucado. You have a ticket to heaven no thief can take, an eternal calm no divorce can break. Every sin of your life has been cast to the sea. Every mistake you've made is nailed to the tree. Your blood bought and heaven made, a child of God forever saved. So be grateful, joyful. For isn't it true what you don't have is much less than what you do? If you'll pray with me. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for Jesus. And I thank you, Jesus, for your obedience and your willingness to die on the cross for us, Lord God. I just pray, Father, that you help each and every one of us to look for the ways, Lord God, in which you have so graciously blessed us and help us to try to strive to be thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. So I've got a song. Did any of y'all have been into any of my Bible studies? You know, I love songs. 